Let's talk about sequential minimal optimization, which is our hammer to um, solve the SVM dual problem. So SMO, uh, or sequential minimal optimization, is a technique due to John Platt from 1998, and it's a type of coordinate ascent algorithm adapted to support vector machines so that the solution always stays feasible. So I put up here the dual problem from the non-separable SVM, and um, to do a coordinate ascent, what we would normally do is adjust one alpha at a time to try to maximize the objective. So you'd, you'd fix all of the other alphas and you pick one of them, you're gonna maximize the objective. Then you, then you do that. And then you pick a different alpha and you try to maximize the objective. And then you keep iterating through and try to keep making that objective larger and larger and larger until there's nowhere else to go. But here it doesn't work. So why is that? Well, let's try fixing alpha two through alpha n and we'll adjust alpha one um, to maximize the objective and we'll see where that goes wrong. Okay, so where it goes wrong is that constraint. <laughs> so that constraint kind of ties all the alphas to each other. You can, actually, you can actually solve for alpha one in terms of the other alphas. So if you know all the other alphas, you actually know alpha one uh, deterministically. Okay, so if I write it like this, divide both sides by, by y1, y1's plus one or minus one, so it's the same thing as, as you know, multiplying by, by y1. Okay, so there we go. Um, we have alpha as a alpha one as a function of the other alphas, so that's actually really bad. Um, okay, so since the other alphas are fixed, you can't adjust alpha one. So if you're going to do some adjusting of the alphas to try to maximize that objective, you have to optimize at least two of them at a time. You have to be able to move two of them at a time so that you can stay within the feasible region. Okay, so let's adjust alpha one and alpha two this time. Okay, maybe that'll work. And it does work, it does. Because you still have a degree of freedom and, and you can still stay within the feas feasible region. So let's update alpha one and alpha two holding the other alphas fixed. Okay, so we say that, um, so we grab that constraint there and we'll say that alpha one y one plus alpha two y two equals some stuff, some function of the other alphas. And I'll call that zeta. I guess I'm really in the mood during these lectures to create squiggly Greek letters. Okay, so zeta. Anyway, so that's a fixed constant where, because again, we're assuming that just in this iteration, we're only allowed to adjust alpha one and alpha two. And later on in other iterations, we'll adjust other alphas, but here just alpha one and alpha two. Okay. Now I can solve for alpha one as a function of alpha two. And as you can see, this is a line. All right, so again, uh, I did this very tiny little trick, which was to know that y1 is either plus one or minus one, so one over y1 is the same as y1. Okay, so there's my line. So if I let alpha one vary within its full range of zero to c, right, because all the alphas are bounded between zero and c. So if I let alpha one vary within its full range, then alpha two can only vary between the high and the low value h, h and l uh, over here. So if I choose alpha two to be between h and l, that will tell me exactly what number alpha one is and it will be feasible. It will be between that range zero to C. Cool, and that's what I want. So what I wanna do then is optimize alpha two within that range H to, H to L, and then that'll give me um, an alpha one value. And hopefully I can do this to optimize, I can pick my alpha two so that whatever alpha one value comes out, the two of them will help optimize my objective. Okay, so here we go. I, I want to maximize alpha two within that HL range so that um, when I set alpha one equal to that function of alpha two, then I can maximize my whole objective. Now this, of course, is a one-dimensional quadratic optimization problem in alpha two. Now it's quadratic because you have alphas multiplying each other, right? There's um, it's multiplying. There's alpha twos multiplying other alpha twos. 
right? And uh, alpha one here is just kind of a, um, a kind of a nuisance variable because it's actually a function of alpha two. So this whole thing, yeah, it's a it's a one one dimensional quadratic program in alpha two. So I can draw it as a parabola. Um, uh, I might have drawn it upside down because I, I I don't know whether it's going to be right side up or upside down. It depends on you know where you are in the objective and so on and so forth. But it's it's at least quadratic, and we know how to solve quadratics. We take their we take the derivative and set it equal to zero. Now if the the extreme point is out of range, then um, we know that the solutions either right the solutions either the extreme the the point where the derivative equals zero or it's l or it's h right alpha two has to be in the range of l to h so all we have to do is check these three points l h and the point where the derivative is zero and it's and the solution is going to be one of those three points okay yeah so take the derivative with respect to alpha two set it equal to zero and the optimal value is either that point or or it's l or it's h <laughs> you could you you just go and investigate those three and great you're done and then of course you you just continue to iterate over the alphas um you know you you you, you solve here we solve for alpha two but then you might pick like alpha five and alpha six and then do the same thing and then you might pick alpha 12 and alpha one and then do the same thing um, but the and the order of which alphas to update that's actually based on heuristics often people just cycle through the the pairs of alphas right alpha one and alpha two alpha two and alpha three alpha three and alpha four whatever you want to do you can do whatever you like there as long as you continue to update the alphas you'll eventually get to the optimal solution okay so this is just a summary of smo it's a coordinate ascent algorithm for support vector machines it updates two variables at a time to obey the constraints. There are heuristics to choose the order of these two variables, but it doesn't really matter because the problem is convex. And so you just keep iterating until no more improvements are possible. And then you know you've reached an optimal solution because the um, any local, uh, local minimum for a convex objective is also a global minimum because that's the nature of convex problems. Okay, and then the solution after you've after you're done with all of it is the collection of dual variables needed for the support vector machine problem. It's the alphas you'll you'll get alpha star after you solve all this, and then again from alpha star you get the lambdas, and then that will give you your function that you can use to make predictions from. Thanks.